We are going to record this session, so feel free to ask questions. It always adds to the richness of the session. Uh, we are modeling this uh, entire configuration in Blender, and then we're going to bring that into Paper Vision. So let me bring up a resource for you guys that are new to Blender. It's on Wikipedia, and it's wikipedia.org, wiki, forward slash, Blender underscore 3D. And it's hard to see the entire thing there. Let me open this up a little bit. There it is. Mm -hmm. Blender underscore 3D uh, colon underscore noob underscore 2 underscore pro and this is also listed on my book's blog as well. So it's a great uh, tutorial. Probably one of the best I've seen on Blender so far. And we're actually going to start with a little bit of a warm up uh, from this. We're actually going to build a penguin. Now the penguin is here. If you go to learn to model and you come down here you can go to uh, let's see, penguins from spheres. It shows you how to build a penguin. And this is one thing that Roxanne Kendrui asked for, so if you would pass this information on to her tomorrow, I'd really appreciate it. Why did she she wanted a step by step, hey, how to do Blender. Uh, we had a. Oh, how to do Blender? I yeah. think she wanted to build a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> she, has, <laughs> she has a love for penguins. No. <laughs> Actually, what happened was uh, I had done a tutorial series. Seven, there are actually seven videos on, on YouTube right now on how to use Blender, just real basics, how to get over the hump. And I would built several items, and she wanted a step-by-step -step how to build those items. And we had not done that. We just said, hey, let's do this, this, and this, and talked about the shortcut keys. So this document does build everything step-by-step, -step, and it builds on everything. So it's really, really good. Probably the best thing I've seen on Blender so far, even better than the book you might buy on Amazon. So I uh, just want to give you that so you can go to that. And, and just real quick, tomorrow for your for your benefit, tomorrow there uh, yeah. these videos are on the web. Uh, Blender getting started one, two, three, four, five, six, right. seven. They're also on my blog under uh, 3D modeling as well. And uh, this is just basically just getting over the hump, getting used to the interface, learning some of those shortcut keys. And once you go through that, I mean, if you look at that document I just gave, you'll have no problem. And we're going to actually uh, go to that right now. We're going to build a penguin. Isn't that great? So I will basically change it just a little bit because I don't want to spend all the time doing all the details, but uh, we'll uh, get most. So here's a Blender's interface. We're going to build a penguin today from a sphere. And uh, this is pretty much what we covered last time, Lois, with a few extra shortcut keys. But the procedure is the same. So we're going to hit the delete key uh, to get rid of that uh, uh, square this on the, on the screen and then we're going to hit the space bar and we're going to add a UV sphere. I hit, uh, and I want to change the uh, parameters to 16 by 16. 16, right, 16. Mm -hmm. okay. 16. And I'm going to rotate it so I can see it uh, the other way and so or one second Hold on. Okay, I just hit the one key that just rotate it, so that gets me in a different view, all right? The one key in your numpad? Oh, the new home one? Yeah, that will send the Z axis up straight. Uh, I've got green. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to uh, actually hit the tab key to get into edit mode. And I want to make this larger. going to hit the S for sizing. So once you get your sphere on the screen and you orient it so that Z is up, what you're going to do is hit the S key, hit Z so you can stretch along the Z axis, and hit 2 so it's, it stretches up. Now I, I, my screen wasn't activated, so you get to see me do that again. Hit the S key, hit Z to be along the Z axis, and hit 2, and you stretch it along the Z axis. So at this point, what I'm going to do is kind of hit A to get off of that. Okay, so I'm not, so I deselect all the vertices. Oh, you clicked on the screen, that's great. And what I'm going to do now is box the top part of these uh, vertices. So I hit B for box, right? And I just select the top part right there. And now I'm going to show you a command I didn't show you last time. And that's control space bar at the same time. And come down here and hit combo. And you should get a little gizmo that looks like this. Now this gizmo allows you to rotate and to stretch at the same time. Or rotate and translate at the same time. So what I'm going to do here is, see this little circle right here? I'm going to rotate like that, let go, and shift over. And shift up a little bit. I'm going to show you another trick now. It's very helpful when working with items like this. 
is control plus or control minus. If I hit control plus, what happens is more of the rings are selected below. If I hit control minus, then less of the rings are selected below. And what I want to do is actually do that, go up and select le one less. I want to once again grab that, rotate around a little bit, and then stretch it out a little bit. Uh, excuse me, move it around. There you go. So I'm creating the neck of the penguin. So I'm going to hit the control minus key to get the next band, one band less, and I'm going to rotate a little bit more, and then stretch it over a little bit, just like that, and maybe bring it down a little bit. Okay, we did that, so we're going to do it again. I'm going to hit control minus to get on the, la the next ring, and I'm going to rotate a little bit more. See that? Stretch it out a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to make it kind of look like a penguin. And then control minus again, I guess. I probably selected too many rings. Now, I can actually use that middle button to roll in to get closer there, right? And remember, I can use this uh, shift click to click around. And then at this point, once again, do the, the, go through the whole process again. You know, rotating more, trying to get that penguin look. I'll, you'll see it in a moment. Then control minus to go one more down. And that looks, that's actually looking pretty good. I actually might bring that in a little bit like that. I'm going to actually now just hold the middle mouse button and, and rotate around so I can see that piece right there. I'm going to actually zoom in and I'm going to hit A to deselect off and I'm going to right click on that vertice right there and what I'm going to do is actually stretch that out. Okay. So let me rotate around this way a little bit and I'm going to hit this red button here, a red arrow, and I'm going to stretch that nose out. That's my penguin's nose right there. You see, and I can move that around. Okay, so there you go. It doesn't quite look like a penguin, but it's a, it will start looking as a penguin as we do more. Well, kind of look from that position it might, okay? Got the idea? So at this point, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the wings out and pull some feet out, and then we're going to get out of here, okay? Maybe flatten the bottom a little bit. And then we're going to get out of here and start actually building, building uh, part of the supper club or showing you how to build something like the supper club. So I want to pull some wings out here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically see right here my polygon selection tool. I'm going to hit that polygon selection tool so I can select my polygons. I'm going to click on that. Excuse me. Let's get off of that real quick. Uh, I want to show you another tool we haven't used before as well. See this little box right here next to the polygon selection? If I click on that, basically it keeps me from, select, from back facing or doing a back face selection. What happens sometimes when you select things in uh, 3ds Max or in Blender, it selects the back part too. And I don't want that to happen. I just want what I'm looking at to be selected. Okay. So 